But this is where our media's analysis of Trumpism hits a wall. And I'm going to be calling this wall reality. Because in reality, we have for too long now been treated by Washington elites and owners of wealth as mere objects. We have for, ooh, we have for too long now been treated and managed as if we were mere human matter. But in reality, this situation did not appear from nowhere. It didn't fall randomly out of the clouds. Our bodies and our communities have for too long been formed into objects whose exploitation and domination ultimately serves the rich and powerful. Yeah. Sexual harassment, no. inequality of pay, no. rape culture, denial no, of health care, poverty wages, violence and ridicule, a militarized police and deportation state, a life that is dominated by the dictates of a capitalist economy. But none of these things started on January 20th. We have been under assault for decades. Donald Trump does not deserve all of this credit. He is only a, cap a catalyst in our descent against this system. And now that Trump's thing, <laughs> And now that Trump is thrown into power, we have moved to act on our long-standing complaints. We have decided to come together and say enough is enough. We're proclaiming this society must change. And the fact that we are here today tells ourselves and our enemies that we intend to fight. And all of us here know that there is no reason to fight unless you intend to win. So it's time to make the record clear. Women's movements have a long history of fighting and not of leaning in. I'll talk louder. What place did lean in feminism have? In 1929, Nigeria, when women waged war against the imperialism of colonial Britain. What role did lean in feminism play during the American Civil Rights Movement? When 11,000 Algerian women took up arms against French occupation, they were not just leaning in. The working class struggles of 1970s Ireland didn't see a mere lean in. They saw women at the forefront. There are so many historical examples for us to look to, not to mention right now, the thousands of women who are fighting ISIS and defending the Rojava revolution. <laughs> Women's movements have always found themselves in a world of force. And for there to be any gains, they've had to use certain methods that were appropriate to their context. And I'm here to tell you, our context is not so different from their context. And ultimately, this is why we are here today, to fight the fights of yesterday. Because our true freedom and equality has yet to be won. And guess what? We are here to win. We can win if we continue forward and organize ourselves into an even greater force. Today marks the beginning in the movement for our collective emancipation. This is an emancipation from sexism, 
racism, transphobia, imperialism, and the capitalist system that makes all of these concrete. But today, this one day, it's not enough. We have yet to realize our full power as a collective force for change. So today is a small step towards our next endeavor. A general strike in Oakland on International Workers Day, May 1st. The Women's Strike Collective is organizing a women's block for femmes, trans, queer people, and their allies on May Day. If we come together under the banner of solidarity and united against those who oppose us, we can win. And we will win. On May 1st, withhold your labor. Withhold your labor on May Day. We begin our preparation today, right now, by taking the streets. We want everybody to fill the streets on 14th over this way. Fill the streets. Go!